So today be December 2nd, Friday. Yesterday was the opening ceremony of a 60-day Satipatthana special retreat. So yesterday it was the opening day. Uh, during this special retreat, there are over 70, nearly 80 yogis participating from uh, many countries. And also there are a certain number of local yogis as well. So it is very encouraging to see yogis coming here to practice Satipatthana meditation with much appreciation. And then Sharati is very glad to see Yogi practicing with ardent effort, full of alertness, readiness, and activeness. So seeing Yogi practicing with ardent effort, Sharati is glad that our relatives have the uh, have the cherishing mind towards this uh, Dhamma and Saraji is very glad that he is having this opportunity to give Dhamma gifts to all the yogis who are present here. So Saraji is going to give Dhamma gifts to you all. So it is important that you will accept his Dhamma gift with much appreciation, making use of his Dhamma gift with much appreciation. So if you accept his Dhamma gift with appreciation and if you make use of his Dhamma gift, then we are related even we are related very closely. So by making use of this uh, Dharma kit, we will be related closer and closer. Even though we are geographically apart, we are of different nationalities and there is difference in our custom and culture, but we have something in common. We follow the teaching of the Buddha. That's why even though we are geographically apart, whether, uh, even though we are different in nationality, we are close Dhamma relatives because we follow the teaching of the Buddha. So Jaroji will like to give help by giving Dhamma gifts so that you will have this warm Dhamma blood. The Dhamma blood in you will become warmer and warmer. So Jaraji will give the Dhamma help, Dhamma gift, according to the teaching of the Buddha, in accordance with the uh, teaching of the late Venerable Mahasi Siyado. So it is very uh, necessary for you to accept this Dharma gift with much appreciation. By accepting the Dharma gift and by practicing accordingly, you will become a true disciple of the Buddha. So by practicing according to the teaching of the Buddha, we are related very closely. And it is very essential that you keep your body, speech and mind pure, clean, tame and lovable. So if your body, speech and mind is pure, tame and lovable, it is very satisfying. And by practicing, when you have attained at least the first stage of Magha Palanyana, path and fusion knowledge, it is said to be that you are worthy 
of coming across Buddha Sasana as a human being. Once you have attained at least the first Magapalanyana, thought and social knowledge, you will never you will never be on the wrong path, but instead there is a guarantee that you will be on the correct path until you reach your peaceful goal. So today Yaroji will explain what is a true disciple of a yogi, who are the ones who are just disciple of the Buddha just by name, and who are the ones who can just be called disciple of the Buddha in a very superficial way, and Saraji will explain to which extent you must follow the teaching, to which extent you must practice to become a genuine disciple of Buddha. The teachings are taught by the Buddha, who himself knew the Dhamma in a very extraordinary way. And this Buddha taught these teachings out of great compassion, Mahakaruna. And these teachings were taught 2,500 years ago in uh, Jabudipa, what is called Jabudipa, which is now called India. So Buddha traveled from place to place in India to give teaching so that beings will be able to practice the Dhamma and will be liberated. So Buddha taught so that beings will be uplifted from the state of being inferior. So by practicing the Dhamma, the beings are uplifted from the state of being inferior. By attaining at least the first Magapalajana, the first stage of thought and social knowledge, one will be totally free from the gravity of Kilesa gravity of defilement, which can lead to abaya, the low assistances. So in Sabudipa, there are kings who give presents to each other, and usually these presents and gifts are material gifts, because they uh, think, they take material gifts as precious. So during that time, they give uh, material gifts to each other, but the, th- the king who practice uh, Buddhist teaching, they respond to each other by giving back Satipatthana uh, inscription in gold leaf. So now also, Jaraji is uh, repaying the support from people from the devotees of many countries by giving Dhamma gifts. So after Buddha passed away, after Buddha attained Brinibbana, after 500 years after Buddha attained Brinibbana, there was a king called Asoka. This Asoka king practiced the Dhamma and he knew the essence of Dhamma. So he encouraged the Arahat to make a to to form groups or teams, and then he urged these teams of Arahats to travel from one place to another to propagate the Buddha's teaching. This way, he himself 
practice and then he gave Dhamma gifts in an effective way by spreading or letting the Buddha teaching spread. So in the same way, Jaraji is going to give Dhamma health to you all. Jaraji said he is not as good as an Arahat, but he would give you Dhamma gifts as much as he can from his own uh, knowledge and experience. So he has been giving Dhamma gifts to yogis who come and practice here. And if he has the opportunity, he travels, he also travels abroad to give Dhamma help to those who cherish the Dhamma. So when Yaraji sees people accepting his Dhamma gift with much appreciation, Yaraji feels more and more encouraged. And whenever he sees Yogi accepting his Dhamma gift with appreciation, making use of his Dhamma gift with uh, respect, he feels very much satisfied. Whenever he thinks about Yogi practicing intelligently, making use of his Dhamma gift properly, he feels he feels joy and rapture and satisfaction. So today, Saraji will give Dhamma help and Saraji hopes that you will be able to accept his Dhamma gift with much appreciation. So in the past, people have super normal spiritual power. So it is easy to travel uh, for them. It is easy to make Dhamma trips because they have uh, special, super normal spiritual power. So when they want to travel, when they want to make Dhamma trips, they just travel with their super normal power uh, by, by air. So they could go from one place to another very easily using their supernormal power. So it is easier for them to make Dharma trips. But now during our time, we do not have this, uh, Saraji said he does not have this uh, supernormal power. So he has to use the power of material things. When Jaraji has to travel abroad, he has to go on a plane. He's got to take a, a plane abroad. So because he does not have the supernormal spiritual power, he had to take uh, he had to take the help of this material thing by um, taking a flight to abroad. Now in this special 60 day retreat, there are yogis coming here by the help of this uh, power of material thing by uh, taking a plane here. There are yogis from almost six continents. We see Asians, we see Americans, North Americans, South Americans. We see people from Australia, but we seldom see yogis from Africa. But we see most of the yogis from uh, many continents. So these yogis come here with appreciation for Dhamma. For Asians, we are Asian relatives because we are related in Asian blood. And for those yogis who come from other continents, even though we are not related by Asian blood, we are world relatives because we say we live on the same planet Earth. 
That's why we are world relatives. Even though we have different culture, we are human beings which dwell on the same planet Earth. That's why we are world relatives. And especially according to the teaching of the Buddha, we have been related to each other in previous existences. We have been related as father and son, brother and sister, mother and daughter, and so on. So according to Buddha's teaching, there is no one on earth to whom we have not been related. So everyone, we were related throughout the Sansara as family. So in this way, we are called Sansara relatives. So today, we are meeting with each other. We are meeting our old Sankara relatives. So having this chance to see each other, having this opportunity to meet each other, rather than giving each other material things, it is better that we also give each other the market. So we have to give each other Dharma gifts and we've got to accept the Dharma gifts given. So it will be very satisfying to see the yogi accepting the Dharma gifts with much appreciation. As much you practice, the Dharma blood will circulate more and more. The more you practice, the more Dharma blood will flow, the more Dharma blood will circulate in the body. So among many kinds of being related to each other, the best way to be related is by Dharma blood. By practicing the Satipatthana practice, we will become Dharma relatives. So, by becoming Dhamma relatives, we will not be different in nationality or race, but we will be of the same, uh, same type, Dhamma relatives. In this way, there will be, uh, very, it will be very smooth in associating with each other. We will cherish, uh, there will be, uh, Mita among us. There will be forgiveness, patience, uh, sacrifice, and so on. So in this way, being uh, related in Dharma, everything will become smooth and convenient. So it is very essential that the yogi make use of the uh, Dharma kit. Yogis must practice diligently so that one will attain uh, one will attain one goal. So having this opportunity, Saraji is ready to give Dharma help. Saraji is ready to give Dharma help according to the teaching of the Buddha. So here uh, we have Asian relatives, we have world relatives, samsara relatives, and most important of all, dharma relatives. So having this opportunity to meet with dharma relatives, we should be frank with each other. So when we are dealing with each other, we should be frank, we should be open, there should be no hesitation, no uh, here, but we should uh, be with each other openly, frankly, and there should be mutual understanding, and we should have loving kindness towards each other, and there should be mutual understanding. But at times, we may find 
problems or difficulty among oneself, among ourselves. If there is any difficulty, you, uh, we should keep in mind that we are a family, so we should solve it out in a very calm and smooth way. If there is a group that is bound to the problems or difficulty, so if there is a kind of a problem, if the problem is big, we should solve it so that this problem will become small. And if we have small problems, we should solve it so that this problem will diminish. So if we find problems or difficulties, we must solve it so that it will be smooth, everything will become uh, smooth and convenient. Only then it would be easier to practice the Satipatthana meditation which leads to the development of mind and knowledge. So by practicing Satipatthana meditation diligently, one will become a genuine disciple of the Buddha. In Bali it is called Buddha Savaka, disciple of the Buddha. So Jaraji will help all of you here so that you all will become a genuine disciple of the Buddha. Today Jaraji will explain what is a true Savaka, what is a genuine Savaka. Savaka means disciple or student. So today Jaraji will explain about the meaning of Savaka uh, from the uh, text, uh, from the text. So in Visuddhi Mega, the commentary uh, by the name of Visuddhi Mega, part of purification, it explains in the chapter of the virtues of the meaning of this word, Savaka. It says that um, in the Visuddhi Mega, it stated that Bhagavato Ovada Nusasane Sakatam Sunanjiti Savaka. It means that Savaka is the person who follows and listens respectfully the teaching, the instruction, the definite guidance and instruction of the Buddha who eradicated all the defilements by attaining arahatship. So this is the meaning of the Savaka. So what does this Savaka disciple listen to? He listened to all Vada Nusasani. He listened to the instruction, a definite guidance given by the teacher. Given, sorry, given by the Buddha. So Buddha instructed, Buddha gave definite guidance so that there will be welfare of being. And Buddha also set down the discipline so that body speech will be proper. Another way Buddha taught Dhamma Vinaya. Buddha taught the instruction so that uh, beings will have uh, welfare. And Buddha also set down the discipline so that one's body and mind would be proper. So Sarvaka or the disciple is the one who follows the instruction and the definite guidance of the Buddha. Who teaching does a Savaka listen? It is Buddha's teaching. Sagava Do means Buddha's teaching. And what kind of Buddha was it? Buddha was the one who fulfilled all the paramis 
from the life of a true mega from the existence of a true mega until the uh, final existence as Siddha Thap. Becoming a Siddha Thap prince, uh, having fulfilled all the paramis, and at last uh, being born as a prince, Siddha Thap, he practiced this Dukkara Shariya or charity practice for six years. And then after he practices uh, this Satipatthana practice by attaining an arahatship, Buddha eradicated all the defilements. He eradicated the defilements in such a way that there is nothing, no defilement is left over, no remainder of defilement. So every defilement were eradicated by attaining arahatship. So here Savaka means the person who follows the guidance, who follows the instruction and definite guidance given by the Buddha who eradicated all the defilements by attaining arahatship. Buddha eradicated all the Hilesa by uh, practicing Satipatthana meditation. By practicing Satipatthana meditation, he, Buddha attained Arahasis and eradicated all the uh, all the defilements. What is most extraordinary is that he did not learn the method from the other Buddha, but he himself, he himself found out the way, he himself found out the practice to gain this Sabha Jnana omniscient knowledge. Ordinary people, ordinary person have to learn from the teacher about the method of practice. But Buddha himself found out the way, found out the method of practice and he, by practicing his own method, he attained the Sabbhita Jnana of Nishyan knowledge. Buddha reflected that the defilements such as Radha Dosa are causing suffering in being. All the suffering are caused by defilement. So all the beings are suffering because of the defilement Kilesa. So these Kilesa torture the being. They torture the being when the kilesas are arising. They torture the being at the moment of arising. They burn or scorch the being. Kilesa can make the being burn, scorch, burn in flame. So by indulging these kilesa, one will end up committing all sort of evil conduct by body, speech and mind and thus one will get bad results and bad consequences. So these kilesa torture the person. At, at the moment of these kilesa arising, the beings will be suffering and when the being indulges, when the being indulges in this defilement, there will be more and more suffering. So it is essential that being should eradicate these defilements which are the cause of suffering. So in order to eradicate these defilements, one should practice the practice. 
So in the Vipassana practice, there are three trainings involved, Sila, Samadhi, and Sanya. Sila, morality, Samadhi, concentration, and Sanya, wisdom. By practicing the Sila training, gross form of defilement will be overcome. By practicing Sila, uh, transgressive form of defilement will be overcome. By practicing the Samadhi training, obsessive defilement, Riyuta Nahilesa, obsessive defilement, which manifests in the mind, will be overcome. And by attaining, by gaining deeper Samanyana and Ariya Jnana, inside knowledge and supra-mundane knowledge, one will eradicate the refined form of defilement, dormant form of defilement to the point of no return. So by practicing the three trainings, Sila, Samadhi and Sanya, one can overcome the gross, medium and refined form of defilement. So by practicing these three trainings, one can eradicate the all three forms of defilement. Buddha himself eradicated all forms of defilement by practicing uh, Sila, Samadhi, Sanya, the three kinds of training, by practicing Satipatthana meditation, by Satipatthana practice. And after eradicating all these defilements, Buddha taught a Dhamma Vinaya, instruction, guidance, and discipline. So Buddha practiced his Satipatthana practice, Buddha to be practiced Satipatthana practice and gain the inside knowledge stage by stage and finally Buddha attained all four levels of Magha Pala Jnana, all four levels of path and Sushan knowledge. By attaining all four levels of path and Sushan knowledge, Buddha eradicated all the defilements. Among the defilements which were eradicated, there is uh, Moha Kilesa, which is one of the defilements which were eradicated. Moha is the uh, delusion, the delusion not knowing the truth, the delusion being confused, vague, dim about the truth and knowing wrongly. And he eradicated a vidya. He eradicated a this avisa. So by eradicating this avisa, there is nothing that Buddha doesn't know. So Buddha knew everything that should be known. Knowing everything that should be known is the power of Sapa Nyuta Jnana, omniscient knowledge. And with this omniscient knowledge, Buddha knew the disposition of all beings. He knew what is beneficial, what is not beneficial. And Buddha also was endowed with the quality of Vidya Sarana Santana. He was endowed with knowledge. He was not uh, endowed with knowledge and conduct. And based on this Mahakaruna, based on great compassion, Buddha guided beings to refrain from unbeneficial things and to perform the beneficial things. Only if, uh, sorry, just because of this Mahakaruna, just because of this uh, great compassion, because of this great compassion, Buddha could guide beings to refrain from unbeneficial, and he, uh, Buddha could guide beings to perform what is beneficial. So Buddha is the one who was endowed with this Vita Sarana, and uh, Buddha was endowed with 
Mahatruna, great compassion, and thus Buddha could lead us, Buddha could guide us what is beneficial and what is not beneficial. So Savaka is the person who follows the teaching of the Buddha, Buddha who was endowed with Vidyasarana and Mahakaruna. So according to VQD Maga, according to this commentary, uh, Savaka is the person who listens uh, respectfully, attentively, the instruction and guidance given by the teacher, uh, given by the Buddha. It is said that Sakata Savana, listening, following, uh, attentively, respectfully. So to which extent one must follow the teaching? Jaraji will explain that tomorrow. So Jaraji said, uh, Jaraji wished that may you be able to walk on the right path so that you will gain, you will attain your correct goal. This will be all for today. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.